Welcome again. In this session, we're going to be doing 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. We're going to be talking about the election of God, the power of God, the joy of the Holy Spirit, and turning from idols. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus. Notice that it's not just Paul alone here speaking. This is Paul and two other guys, okay? So he's speaking on behalf of himself, of course, but also on behalf of two other people. Unto the church of the Thessalonians. So this is not to the world. This is not to just your everyday, you know, Joe Blow on the street. This is to the church. And by the way, the word church in the original Greek manuscripts comes from a Greek word that means called out ones, those who are called out, those who are set apart from the world. And all too often in these days, especially in the West, there's not too much difference between the church and the world. There's supposed to be. There's supposed to be a lot of difference. And this is not to just any church. This is to the church in Thessalonica. This is to the church, which really is not a building, but the believers. Paul continues in verse 2 and verse 3, saying that he gives thanks for these believers and that he prays for them. But he says something very, very interesting in verse 4. He says, Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God, God had a specific purpose for these believers. In fact, it says that God elected these believers. It was God who called these people out from the world. Just how Jesus actually called out his disciples, you know? He walked around. He didn't call everybody to be his disciple. He called certain people to be his disciple. Verse 5, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power. This is very, very important to understand. The church, the real church, and the real gospel, the real doctrine, is not just words only, but it's in power. And the greatest power in the world is the power to set you free from sin. God has and does and will do great miracles, okay? But the greatest miracle of all is the miracle of setting someone free from sin. That means you can say, you know what, I was bound in this one sin. I was a slave to a particular sin. Or perhaps, as many people are, you're a slave to many different sins. You do many things that you know you shouldn't do, but you do it. A lot of times in the world they call it a habit or an addiction. But you know, in reality, it is being a slave to a spirit, an evil spirit, a spirit of sin. There are a lot of different religions in the world. There are a lot of different doctrines in the world. But the true doctrine is the truth that sets you free. The truth that Jesus spoke about in John chapter 8. He said, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. So if you don't go to a church that changes people's lives, where people walk in sinners and they walk out saints, then I tell you, you better look for a different church because the true church of God, the true doctrine of God is the doctrine that sets you free. I'm talking about people who walk in with drug addictions and walk out completely free. You can be set free from addictions to tobacco, to drugs, to pornography, to all kinds of different sins, and you can be absolutely free. Free from sin. This is the power of the gospel. This is the power that Paul is talking about here. Verse 6, And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. That doesn't sound like your ear-tickling teaching you hear today in church, does it? Paul says here, You have received the word of God in much affliction. Just like it says in the book of Acts, you will enter the kingdom of God through much hardship. The word ghost here is just an old King James way of saying spirit. It's the same word. It comes from the same word. So the joy of the Holy Ghost is the joy of the Holy Spirit. Now the joy of the Holy Spirit is not dependent upon outward or external conditions. The joy of the Holy Spirit is a solid thing and it is something that cannot be taken away by any external circumstances. I'm going to skip on down here to the last half of verse 9. Paul's talking about turning to God from idols. I know a lot of people when they hear the word idols they think of these little statues or big statues or whatever, but the word idols is not limited to that. 
you can have an idol in money. You can have a, an idol in, in automobiles, in, in anything material, and actually things that are not material too. You, you yourself can be an idol. And actually, Paul said in another one of his letters that your belly can be an idol. You can serve the God of your belly, okay? And a lot of people do that today as well. I mean, they eat and eat and eat. They don't eat to live, they live to eat. That is having an idol. Food can be an idol. All kinds of different things can be idols. So you gotta be very careful. Turn from idols. Turn from everything that is not God to serve and to worship the one true living God. Put it this way, when you come to breathe your last breath, all these earthly things and everything else that you've accumulated on earth is nothing, okay? It comes to nothing. It doesn't mean a thing, okay? The only thing that really is meaningful is where you are with God. Do you serve God? Do you worship God? Are you obeying God? Do you obey His commandments? Do you do what He said to do? Do you not do what He said not to do? That's a big one as well. Until next time, as I always say, seek God with all your heart and you will find Him. Call upon Him and He will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.